Are you tired of feeling scared and nervous about paying taxes in the U.S., about IRS penalties, about not understanding the laws in the U.S. or what you can or can't do with your LLC? Maybe you're nervous your bank accounts are going to get closed. Well, I don't want you to feel that way. And Have you ever wondered if you can ever just focus on your business and not be scared of all this stuff going on all the time? In this video, I'm going to go over some mistakes that I've seen people making and how we help our clients avoid those mistakes and how I've helped people save a lot of money in taxes. So I'm going to go through the biggest mistakes that I've seen and I'm really excited to share these with you because they're going to help you not feel nervous about this because there's nothing to be scared about if you do it the right way. So the first mistake that I see made all the time is that people don't understand the compliance responsibilities that are required of them. That means the forms to be sent to the IRS, soon the Corporate Transparency Act, which is not the IRS, it's a it's the FinCEN, it's an anti-money laundering organization, and then the BEA forms, which are another headache of their own. But that's generally it, maybe WAs, W9s, I just did a video on WABEN, WABENE that could be linked up here. And people just don't understand the compliance responsibilities associated with that. And I'll explain it to you right here in brief. If you are a foreign person, a company, or an individual that owns 100% of an LLC, you should be filing Form 5472 with the IRS before April 15th every year. And that's from January, January 1st to December 31st period files the return on April 15th of the next year. If you have more than one owner of an LLC, if it's an LLC with two owners, Fred and Steve are 50-50 owners in this LLC, you're generally going to file a form 1065, and that form is going to be due on March 15th, so it's of the calendar year. So if the year is January 1st to December 31st, these forms are due on March 15th of the year after. And if you are a U.S. corporation, that means you're an LLC, or if you're an actual corporation, or you're a U.S. LLC that made an election on Form 8832 to be taxed as a U.S. corporation, you file Form 1120 on April 15th as well. And if you're a non-U.S. person, which is who I'm talking to, you cannot have an S-corporation. So if you're asking about whether an S-corporation is the best, it's not because you can't have one as a non-resident. It's pretty straightforward there. So these are the most important things. The, the Corporate Transparency Act is something that's new that's going to be starting in January of this next year coming. It's really just disclosing beneficial ownership of U.S. companies. I'm going to make more videos about that coming soon. I'm waiting for the platform to come up so we can do it for a couple of clients and really uh, show you exactly how to do it step by step. So that's a good reason to subscribe to the channel because that video is coming. That's number one is not handling the tax compliance responsibilities. The BEA forms, I'm still, a lot of clients don't file those. Uh, we file it for our clients and we help our clients do it and I have videos on the channel about doing those forms I'm gonna make them better but the ones that I have already should suffice but that's number one you don't understand the compliance responsibilities but apart from what I just listed there's generally no other tax forms to do unless you register for sales taxes but if you don't register for sales taxes and those don't apply to you then that's all you have to do it's not too crazy and if you're following this channel you're watching the videos you're in the groups you're active You'll, you'll figure out how to do it pretty easily. Or, of course, we can do it for you. Number two is really important and very practical, and I have an example here. Number two is you incorrectly complete financial applications. And this is a big one. This last week, I've had three clients contact me about Mercury Bank closing their bank accounts. U.S. banks can close accounts kind of whenever they want. They don't need a reason to do it. So when it happens, it's kind of surprising and they give you basically five, six days to move the money out of the account before they just mail you a check, which is always annoying. So the, the secret to not getting your account closed is this. When you're applying for the account and you're explaining what your business is, you need to emphasize that you do serve U.S. clients in your business. They want to serve, the banks want to work with companies that have U.S. activities, and that can be U.S. clients. For most of you guys watching, it's going to be you having U.S. clients. If you are just doing, sir, if you're a Colombian business that has an LLC and you're doing service for Ecuadorians, you're going to have to just emphasize U.S. clients because maybe the Ecuadorians are paying you from a U.S. account. You want to emphasize and push on the U.S. activity. Where with the IRS, it's the opposite. With the IRS, you don't. You want to emphasize that everything's done outside the U.S. But these bank applications don't go to the IRS, they're completely private, and they don't impact the actual facts and circumstances of what you're doing. So 
If you are applying for bank accounts and they ask you about your business, you're saying we serve U.S. clients, we have U.S. contractors, we have mailing addresses in the U.S. and our, our U.S. clients are our main priority. We have U.S. affiliates, all of that. You don't have to say we have a U.S. headquarters and employees in the U.S. because you probably don't. But you can definitely, uh, that's, that's really what you want to focus on is your U.S. activity. For a lot of clients ask about crypto, what you can and can't do, you can definitely buy send money to and from exchanges but if that's all you're doing they'll probably shut you down but you can definitely do it there's a there's more and more financial online banks that you can open now you know the traditional ones are mercury relay financial we have a good contact with and we get our, our most of our clients there i've been using highbeam.co it seems pretty cool i've been using it for a while and rho uh, there's a lot of banks out there that'll serve as non-residents but they're getting more strict about who they work with so it depends on what country you're from and how you're operating but again my point here is focus on the emphasis on your u.s activity it's really important just as a quick aside while we're talking about banks you can if you can fly to miami and go to the bank with your passport you might need some kind of address some kind of proof of address but if you can go there with your llc documents or even personally you can open accounts in person in the u.s you don't need an i-10 crushing against that so many people say you need an i-10 for a bank account you don't at most banks but you might have to go to 10 different banks to get someone to open the accounts for you but once they're open they, they should be good number three is paying taxes in the u.s just today as of filming this video a client got an eighteen thousand nine hundred dollar check back from the state of indiana and i'm so excited because this person was in the u.s left and then continued to pay taxes after leaving with their old cpa and when they came to me, I said, no, 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 is what I said. Let's get the money back. And basically, we amended the forms. We changed it. We requested refunds. And we've got in almost $100,000 back in total from all the different states, the different entities, the different things she's filed. We've already gotten 100000 back. And there's, a, there's more still pending with the IRS. They are dreadfully slow. But the check's cash. So if you are living outside of the u.s and you are doing your services from there maybe you have e-commerce and even you're selling to the u.s using three uh, 3pl fulfillment centers in the u.s it doesn't matter you don't need to pay u.s income taxes you might have to pay sales taxes but that's another video that you don't have to pay income taxes and number four is not understanding all of the opportunities i had a call with a gentleman today who is in Canada and he's trying to get jobs as a contractor from US companies and he said it's been very difficult they're having an issue hiring him and paying him because that he doesn't have employment authorization in the US and when I explained the opportunity of having an LLC and getting paid directly to his LLC instead of this and presenting himself as a contractor as a business owner instead of an employee it's going to be much easier and he said yes he agrees we're going to be working together i'm going to be setting him up with the right kind of company the right financial accounts and all of that so that he can really actually start to get paid the opportunity it's in the u.s it's extremely competitive and everything's so fast everyone's so busy so if you're coming to me and if two guys come to me for the same service same person same response everything's the same if i if one of them i have to wire money to france and the other one i can pay with a credit card this guy is paid before I even open the invoice. I'm paying with a credit card as soon as possible. I'm gonna send an ACH to a US bank account as soon as possible before I send an international wire. I just don't like to do it. And I'm in the business. Everyone I work with is international. All my clients are international. I'm still difficult. Maybe it's because of the nature of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Maybe that's the problem, but there's a huge opportunity of having a US company and using a US company. But the problem is, is that there's a lot of noise out there so in this video i explained the mistakes people are making and i you know i know you guys are nervous and you're concerned about this but the truth is you don't have to be nervous the what you should focus on is getting more clients you should focus on growing your business and you should outsource this tax stuff or at least like find a solution to it because it's really not worth spending a lot of time getting frustrated about. So if you want to know more about not paying taxes, I have a video right here that goes way more in depth about why and when you don't have to pay income taxes in the U.S. Sales taxes are different. At the end of the income tax video, I'll reference my sales tax video. So click this video and I'll explain more about the sales taxes. I appreciate you being here. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one, guys.